Okay, this is video number three. We're going to try to remove the exhaust now. First, we got to get the shield out of the way. I got two tins in here. So let's take these off, see what happens. Okay. Okay, exhaust shield is off. Here's my muffler. Now, this muffler has these little, I guess you would call them washers. You don't, don't lose those. These help seal up to make sure exhaust gases don't escape. So if you don't put these back on, exhaust gases are gonna escape from here. This right here is your exhaust manifold gasket, okay? So I'm gonna take all the exhaust stuff, we'll put it back in here, and I'll save the bolts, put them in here, or the nuts. I'll take the exhaust and stuff and put them right there. Okay, exhaust is off. All right, the next thing I want to try to take off here, let's, let's remove the spark plug. Just pull this wire off, and now we have to get a spark plug socket. Yeah, most of your small engines, I think, are going to be a 13 16 socket. This right here is a 5 8 socket. Um, you may, this is the main one you use in automotive gasoline engines, is the 5 8 13 16 is the bigger of the spark plug sockets of the two. Mm. Just a little tap here. After I get it loose, take my socket, put it on here. <clears throat> I turn my spark plug out. Okay, now if you look, if your spark plug socket is new, it should have a rubber bushing in here, rubber um, grommet in there. What it does, it holds the spark plug so you don't drop it when you're taking it in and out. Because if you drop it and it hits right here, it's going to close that little gap up, like we saw in the tool video. Let's see, I'm trying to do it real close. Okay, right there. That little gap matters. There's a specification. Usually they're between like 32 and 52 thousandths of an inch. If you drop it and that thing hits, then it's going to close that gap and make your engine either not run at all or not run right. Okay, I want to take this. I'll just stick in the same one with the uh, exhaust. All right. The next thing I want to take off, I want to take off this, I want to look in here. This is your valve cover. Uh, we said before OHV is overhead valve. These are tens right here. You're already taking one off for the shield. Okay. Okay, I'm going to carefully take this gasket off and normally when you're doing engine work and you have valve covers, uh, gaskets and stuff, you're going to replace them. Uh, so it doesn't really matter how they come off for the most part. But in this particular instance, we're going to, have to reuse these gaskets. So I'm trying to use a little bit extra caution just to get them off. Got my little pocket screwdriver here. You can use a little screwdriver or something in your toolbox there. All right, got it off of there. Now, like I said, if this was for a customer and I was working, I was rebuilding their engine for them, they would be definitely getting a new gasket for this. But just for what we're doing, all intents and purposes, this is what we're we're going to keep these uh, reuse these gaskets. All right, I got the three bolts that I took out. It's in the tray of the valve cover. And I'll put that down here. All right. If you look in here, we're going to see a few pieces parts. And you will find these in most, you know, pretty much all your engines. So the first one is this right here. 
This is called a rocker arm. Okay? It's a rocker arm. What it does, it acts as a fulcrum point to push the valve open or shut whenever the camshaft tells it to. This right here is called a push rod, if you can see that. So right here is called a push rod. That's connected to the little camshaft. It pushes the rocker arm up, which then in point pushes the valve down. And that's how you get your valves to open. If you look on this board right here, okay, here is the red thing right here. This is your camshaft. And if you can look and see, that camshaft has lobes on it, and they're kind of like egg-shaped. And what happens is, if you have a push rod style engine, like this one right here, it's got push rods, then this cam load rides on a push rod, and once it comes around, it pushes that push rod up, hits the rocker arm, and pushes the valve down. And that's how it opens the valve. And then as it cycles through, the spring pulls the valve shut. Okay? On this particular engine right here we're looking at, this one, this engine does not have uh, push rods. Okay? This is an overhead cam engine. So if you look, these are the caps, these gray things up here. These caps hold the camshaft down. These are called tappets. And the, and the lobe of the cam goes on the tappet, which pushes the valve down. This is your valve keepers right here. I painted them gold. These are valve keepers. This is what keeps the, the valve spring compressed. This is your valve spring. That's your valve. There's your piston. Okay? Now in your piston, you have a few things you ought to note. First of all, this right here is a piston. This right here is called a connecting rod. It connects the crankshaft to the piston, and so it's called a connecting rod. In that connecting rod, you have bearings. These are your rod bearings. And this right here is your connecting rod cap. On the piston, you should have three piston rings. The first two are more like are more for compression. It keeps all your compression um, inside your combustion chamber and keeps it out of your crankcase. These rings right here, and it's usually a group of two or three little small rings, those are called your oil rings. And what they do is they scrape the oil down off the cylinder back into the crankcase. So you got your pressure rings, your oil ring, and you got these uh, ring landings, which is right here where they fit into, okay? This right here is your crankshaft. Your pistons, like I said before, are connected to your crankshaft. When this cylinder fires, it makes a small explosion, pushes this piston down, which then in turn turns this crankshaft. And then it gets the next piston ready for its compression uh, stroke, your power stroke. Another thing I want to point out on this, on this piece, if you look, there's indentation here in these little indents. And what they're for is actually for valve clearance. This is a pretty tight clearance engine. If your timing chain, which is this right here, were to break, it's going to make your piston slap your valves and then it bend the valve or ruin your piston. Timing chain and timing belts and there's even timing gears in a lot of diesel engines, they time the crankshaft to the camshaft. And, if they, and typically, if they break or get too sloppy, then your pistons will slap your valves, and engine damage will occur. Okay. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned to the next video. Make sure you're taking lots of pictures, uh, taking notes. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.